somebody asked, and of course I jumped right on this because it said, can an orthopedic surgeon, and you know, that's what I do. So uh, be paid for an injection, which is a 20610, that's a large joint injection um, during a post-op global period. Um, if it's the same body part, and then alternatively, what if it's a different body part? Um, and they understand that pain management is inclusive with um, a global period, um, so how would it be handled? So we're going to start off a little bit with descriptions of a global period. So there's an excellent source there um, that is direct from Medicare. It's about a 10, 12 page booklet about global periods. And I actually go there quite often um, when people have a question, just to pull information out of there. Now I know this is a Medicare guideline that it's that I gave there. However, remember Medicare kind of sets the standards for everybody else. Uh, we just did the one last week about consultations. Remember Medicare stopped doing consultations in 2010 and now we're seeing just this year a couple more insurance carriers who are saying yep we're not doing consultations either. So they, they follow suit may take them a while, but um, Medicare usually kind of sets the standard. So a global period means if you had a minor surgical procedure, an IND, some kind of abscess, some kind of debridement, um, that would be a 10-day global period, the day, bef the day of and 10 days after. Where a major surgery, that's your um, hip replacements, knee replacements, um, you know, a, a major procedure that is done on a patient, that is a 90-day global period. That's the day before surgery, the day of surgery, and 90 days after surgery. All that care that you're going to receive in regards to that surgical procedure and that diagnosis is going to be covered under that surgical procedure that was given. So there's no office visits, no um, certain, certain procedures are covered underneath that global period. So a lot of things don't have a global period. Office visit, no global period. Casting, no global period. Injection, no global period. Immunizations, no global period. Physical therapy, no global period. So there's a lot of procedures that we offer in CPT that don't have a global period, but then there are surgical procedures that do. So a knee surgical procedure is a 90-day global period. Um, just my personal opinion, I see that possibly changing one day because they do knee scopes very quickly in outpatient. Patients walk when they leave and they typically have one follow-up visit and then they're done. So we might see adjustments down the road, but nothing has been brought out by the um, orthopedic societies yet. Um, so a, any services that provided in that 90 days are covered under this major surgical procedure. So remember, visits prior to and in relation to that diagnosis for that condition that's going to have surgery. Once that decision for surgery has been made, those visits are inclusive. So that is difficult for a lot of providers to understand if JACO or some other organization requires them to do a pre-op history and physical office visit before surgery. Well, the decision for surgery has already been made. That's a technicality that Medicare uses, not other carriers, Medicare. But the rule is decision for surgery has already been made. So if you're going to do an H&P, it's regarding that surgery and it should be included in your charge. The intraoperative procedure, anything that's standard as part of that procedure, um, if you're going to do, think of a uh, um, manipulation of a fracture, you need to anesthetize that area, kind of numb the area prior that injection of an, an anesthetic in the arm or in the leg or wherever is going to be part of that procedure. In order to manipulate a bone back in place, you need to kind of sedate the person or make the area kind of pain-free. So anything as part of that procedure will be included in the work or view of that procedure. Postoperative services by that surgeon or technically anybody under that NPI or tax ID number are inclu including complications. 
if it doesn't result in them going back to the OR. If they come in because there's swelling or redness or infection or something like that at the site, well, that's part of that procedure that you did, unless you have to take them back to the OR, and then that's going to be something different. Post-op pain management, of course they're in pain. My mother-in-law has shoulder surgery, a shoulder replacement surgery. You're in pain afterwards, but that's they gave you a prescription possibly, or you're taking Motrin or Tylenol or whatever. Um, but if you go back to the visit and to the doctor and say, gosh, I'm in an awful lot of pain there, and they do something for it, that is part of the care, this part of the surgery that was given to you, part of the global period. Things like removing the stitches, removing staples, removing a dressing change, a cast, things like that, they usually count as included with those services, included in that major surgery. So an injection of the same knee post-surgery. Why did you inject that knee post-surgery? Was it for pain? They usually want to inject that. But I, we have seen sometimes after surgery for knee patients in our office, they will inject the synvisc into the area. So in synvisc is acting as that cushion in between the bone. So sometimes they do that as part of the procedure. So that injection uh, is going to be part of the procedure. Is it staged? Did they say, come back and we're going to do the next part of this? That's, you could bill it with a 58 modifier because it's staged. It's part of the procedures. Or is it um, a complication? So if you brought them back to the OR, then you're going to bill it with 78 modifier for whatever procedure it is that you perform. Typically not an injection. You don't go back to the OR for an injection. But um, if there's some reason why you could modify that knee, that same knee that was operated on. But what if you had a different body part, including the opposite knee? So remember, things go by diagnosis. So you'd have a 79 modifier because it's an unrelated procedure. So you can still bill the injection, but that procedure is unrelated to that surgery that they had. It's not part of that global period. I want to be paid separately for this service that I provided. Now remember, payments are based upon what we call the RVU, the relative value units. So part of RVU, there's three components of an RVU. Work, uh, uh, like the overhead, the administration, and malpractice. Those are all part of the RVU. So surgery they get paid a lot because that's a lot of work. So the majority of that component is going into the actual surgery itself. And then a percentage of that fee is covering for anything that happens post-operatively. So in this case, it happened at another body part. We want to get paid that full amount for that because we had to do different work all over again. So you'd also want to make sure you use the lateral specific diagnosis code. If previously they had left knee surgery, your diagnosis will end with a 0.02 or 0.2 or, or a 2 for left, 1 for right. So if they're coming in now for the right, you're going to have a different diagnosis that's going to indicate right knee instead of the left knee. And if they need an E&M at the same time, you're going to have modifiers for that as well. You can have a 24 and a 25 because they're seen for something different and they got a procedure on the same day. So I came up with an example. So the patient had osteoarthritis of both knees, right? So the surgeon performs just surgery on the left knee. It's more severe. So they did surgery on the left. So during that post-operative period, they had surgery October 1st. They come in October 15th for their right side, because the right knee is acting up. So depending upon that circumstance, the provider is going to submit a claim out to the carrier for an injection for that knee with the modifier saying it's something totally different. It's unrelated to the surgery. So that's going to be a 79. And then the J code for whatever medication they might inject. And then alternatively, if they had um, bilateral knee, same patient, osteoarthritis bilateral knee, surgeon performs 
surgery on the left knee. Um, so say they came in for something totally different now and they said, okay, your medical decision-making process, let's give you an injection in that wrist to help that carpal tunnel um, swell that swelling go down or help it alleviate the pain. So in that case, we're going to do an injection with a modifier as well. So you can do injections during the post-op period. If you do them on the same site that surgery was performed on, you would definitely need a modifier if it is not part of the post-operative plan. If it's part of the post-operative plan, then we don't bill for the charge. But if they're coming for some other problem in a global period, then yes, you can bill for that and there are modifiers to adjust for those charges as well. So there's a little bit more information um, down a little bit more on the, that um, answer sheet there. So, so that if we had a visit for something else, then you would have multiple modifiers to describe that scenario. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.